Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make double-sided fabric bunting. You can have the back plain or you can actually put a different design on the back and have it as reversible bunting. This bunting is durable and will last for many years and you can even put it through the washing machine because all of the edges are sealed. To start with, you need to decide what size and shape you want your triangles to be. Take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and then mark half the width of the top of the triangle. So I'm marking about four and a half or four and three quarter centimeters. Then on the folded edge, mark the height of your triangle. So I'm marking mine about 11 and a half centimeters. You do want to allow about half a centimeter for seam allowance on either edge. Draw a line between the two marks, cut it with scissors and you have your template. I have an array of fabrics that are in reds, whites and greys that I'm going to be using to make this bunting. Pin your template onto the fabric. And cut along the edges. flip the template upside down you can match the same edge of the triangle just upside down and then cut that and continue in this way to make your shapes. You can also use a mat and a rotary cutter. Some quilting rulers have triangular marks on them and you can use those to line up with the edges, but I just find it easier to use a paper template. If you are using a quilting ruler and a rotary cutter to cut your triangles, it actually is easier just to lay a fabric triangle that you've already cut onto your fabric and use that as your template. It won't shift around the way paper will. Some fabrics lend themselves to what's called fussy cutting. So for this fabric, I wanted a particular part of the plaid design to sit in the middle of the triangle. So I'm just placing the template onto that part and cutting it. This does create more waste with the fabric, but your bunting will come out looking how you want it to, rather than having half a design that's chopped off in the middle or just looking odd. Once all of your triangles are cut, you need to cut a backing which will go on each one of them. I'm just using plain white, but you could do a different design fabric and have your bunting be reversible. Pin them together and then sew them just on the sides, leave the top open. When you go to turn your triangles inside out, this point is going to create a lot of fabric bunching up in there and it's gonna make a lump. So you need to trim some of that fabric off. Don't cut too close to your stitching and please don't cut your stitching, but just trim it so that there's less fabric in the point to bulk up once you turn them inside out. Turn them inside out and poke out that corner with a pair of scissors or a pen or something similar.
Once all of your triangles are turned inside out, they'll look like this. You need to flatten them out. I find it very helpful to use a butter knife just to get that side seam nice and flat and then iron them. And this is how they will look. They'll look a little bit raggedy at the top and there'll be little points sticking up. So you can either use your rotary cutter to cut them off or just a pair of scissors, trim it straight at the top. Lay out your design and then it's time to string them together. I like to use bias binding and I'll show you why. I have used ribbon in the past, but ribbon doesn't take a curve the way bias binding does. So this is how it's going to look. It's going to kink slightly in between each of the triangles. Take your bias binding, lay it flat, lay a triangle in the middle, fold it over and pin it. Then you can decide how far apart you want your triangles to be. They can be right up against each other or you can have space in between. Just measure the space and continue pinning them in until all of them are pinned in place. Be sure to leave enough excess on the side so that it's long enough to tie where you want it to be. Then just sew from one end to the other straight stitch on your sewing machine. And there you go, there's your bunting all ready to hang and enjoy and use year after year. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.